good morning or afternoon or evening wherever you are watching thanks for joining in with us everybody we've already got lots of people chatting with each other over on youtube so definitely get involved in the conversation chat with each other type in lots of comments make sure you share this video if you will please that would be fantastic um, but yeah, I hope you're all having a lovely day. Today, I'm going to be using gorgeous crystal cubes uh, to create a flat herringbone stitch bracelet. So rather than just doing peyote stitch, which is quite common with um, your cube shaped beads, I thought I'd do something a little bit more interesting to create like a, a dancing effect of how to uh, use your crystal cubes because lots of people say they love using crystal cubes but uh, they're not quite sure how exactly they can they can use them so today i plan to show you a great way of using them um, we've got quite a few people on already um, so good morning to stacy jermaine mother thank you for watching um, we've got June and Nina on, Monica is on, we've got Evelyn, she's on both YouTube and Facebook, thanks for, for joining Evelyn, um, Francis as well, we've had a few people chatting already at the beginning, we had Alexis, she says it's her very first time, so welcome Alexis, thanks for joining us, um, who else have we got, Pat's on there as well, Marsha, Caroline as well, um lots and lots of people have joined in so thank you everyone kelly's here too um first but foremost i'll explain what i'm going to do today so as i said i'm making the gorgeous dancing cubes bracelet wait let's get a little closer so you can have a look uh, let's just pop it into focus here we go so this is the dancing cubes bracelet hopefully we can see it a bit better i'll put my hand behind so you can see those crystal cubes absolutely catch the light and sparkle and look stunning uh, so that is what i'm going to be making first thing i'm going to do is show you the technique to make that dancing effect so see how the cubes don't quite sit straight with each other um, i'm going to show you how to create that sort of dancing effect that you get with the cubes there then i will show you how to taper herringbone into a smaller little piece like this and i'll show you how to attach the clasp so uh, i'll do just sort of like a, a sort of a not the whole bracelet because that would take far too long i will be doing just sort of a sample so that you learn all of the different techniques that i'm going to be doing um, but yes, uh, also, if you want to be part of the show, because we want you to be involved, um, we're really glad. We can see how many people are commenting, which is fantastic. I'm loving it. Um, thank you all for being involved. But don't forget, if you want to be featured in the show, your pictures, I will show them. Uh, if I just pop it on screen, there we go. If you want your pictures of what you've been doing, it doesn't have to be jewelry. It can be any craft. It could be just hanging at home. If you've been watching lots and lots of television, you can send us a picture of whatever it is that you want and we will get them on and show what you've been doing or what you've been making as part of the show. So send an email to live at beadspider.co.uk. It's all lowercase and I will try and get you on to the show so definitely jump over and do that i've got a few pictures because i always do a little segment at the beginning showing what people have sent in after the show last week um and then uh and then yes i'll show you and then at the end of the show towards the end i'll show all the pictures that get sent in today so like i said if you want to be involved send me your picture to live at beadspider.co.uk so as i said i will show you um pictures that we've had sent in so first things first we had fiona she sent us a beautiful picture she took inspiration from our rainbow earrings with um which i did a few weeks ago and she's made herself some little beautiful triangular uh rainbow shaped earrings there which they think i think they look absolutely fantastic um great work there to fiona what does everybody else think of fiona's earrings it's a, a slightly uh, different design to the one that uh, i did on the show the other day what do you guys think about fiona's one there um by the way we've got damon from australia thank you uh we've also got someone from israel i can't unfortunately read what your name is because i don't read 
um, those symbols. So I don't know what your name is exactly, but thank you for joining all the way in Israel. Um, Caroline says she's got her gemstone cuff uh, beads, they've arrived to her just 10 minutes before the start of the show. So just in case you missed it, I'll show you it now. That's what I did last show, which was on Wednesday. I made this beautiful piece just here. That was my show. Um, ah, the lady in Israel's name is Simcha. Thank you for joining Simcha. Um, yes. So uh, that's what I made last week. I'll just show you it in real life. Uh, here, this is the, the finished piece that I made. Uh, here it is. I'll just put it on my wrist. It doesn't quite go with my hairy arms, but hopefully you'll like it. Wait a second. There we go. Uh, that's that beautiful bangle that I made on the show last time. So if you missed that one, jump on over and check out either on the Bead Spider website or on um, our Facebook page. Um, or YouTube, whichever one is easiest for you, and um, and you can watch that video. Uh, now, let's see who else has sent things in. We have Sharon. She sent us a fantastic little picture there that she's made of a set. It looks like Kumahimo bracelet. She's made a little keychain as well and a tassel. I love those, Sharon. Thank you very much for sending in those pictures. They look great. And I think I've got one or two more to show you, and then I will get started on today's tutorial. Um, we've had Kelly in Australia. She's been making beaded frogs. Uh, she also made some scorpions, but I'll show you those a little bit later, not quite yet, uh, just so there's a little something to show both. Uh, but yeah, Kelly's uh, beaded frogs, they look absolutely fantastic. I think she sent me two pictures where I can show you those. Yes, there they are as well. So how do they look? Don't they look fantastic? Great job there by Kelly. Um, I love those beaded frogs there. They look fantastic. Um, so um, just one last thing. I'll just show you an image of what exactly it is that I'm going to be making today. So here we go. This week I'm making the Dancing Cubes bracelet. That one just there is the image of the colorway I'm going to be making. Um, so that one is called Magenta Sunset. So if you think that one is beautiful, you can get that kit. We actually have a special on at the moment, which I'll just show you what all the different colorways look like. These are the five different colors that we have. So I'll just show you and you can see how amazingly sparkly they are. Those are the crystals uh, that you get in there. This particular one, I'll just zoom in so I can show you. I can't remember the name of it. It's like silver pink or something like that. But that one's reversible. So see how this side, they're clear beads on this side, which look really lovely and sparkly. But when you turn it over, they're metallic silver beads. So that's a really lovely little one that you can get. And don't forget, if you hit the link up in the description, we are selling our um, Dancing Cubes kits at up to 20% off. So definitely don't miss out on that because they're an absolute steal at the moment. So this is the Dancing Cubes. I'll just show you really quickly. That one there is the uh, the Amethyst Gold, I think it might be called. There's a really lovely sort of monochrome one as well. We've got, this is the one I'm making today, the Violet Sunset. And then this one I really love because it uses those matte green cubes. Um, and then there you can see that dancing effect really clearly. That one's the silver and pink. So see that beautiful sort of how they're hodgepodge also, like they're, they're, they're dancing. That's what I'm going to be making today. Um, also, let's just, whoops, let me just flip back to my camera here. Um, there we go. So yes, uh, I will also show you, here are an example of the crystal cubes that I will be using. Let's just have a quick closer look at those. So you can see I really, really like using crystal cubes. These ones are three millimeter size. So whoops, just a bit out of shot there. 
Uh, there we go. Uh, I'll just put the materials along the ticker at the bottom. So I'm using three millimeter crystal cubes, which hopefully you can see. They're really, really sparkly. Look how much they catch the light there. Uh, that's because they have these tiny, tiny little faceted cuts on each corner. So it's not quite a smooth, flat face. They've got little cutouts on every single face just to make them ultra, ultra sparkly. So I'm using three millimeter cubes. Um, in fact, why don't I open up a kit and I'll show you exactly what it is I'm gonna be making. So I've got my Magenta Sunset Dancing Cubes kit just here. I'm gonna open that up and I'll show you exactly what you get if you order one of our kits. So, um, like I said, if you fancy one of these, you can get up to 20% off from the link in the description. The kit comes fully included with everything you might need, speaking of which, I need some scissors. I need to find myself some scissors. Hopefully uh, they're handy and I can grab myself some. But anyway, uh, so what you get in your little kit, I might just turn down the brightness a little to try and reduce the glare. There we go. <clears throat> so you get your seed beads that you'll need. You'll get a full strand of your crystal cubes. You've got your clasp. You've got a whole spool of Spidalon thread with included in there, which you can see is a fantastic size 11 um, uh, needle in there as well. Uh, that is included. And then lastly, so these are all the things that you're going to need to make your kit. That is included in the kit. And then finally, you get the full set of instructions included as well. So you'll see just here, it's got lots and lots of text. It's got a key telling you what all the different beads are, how to do the thread path. You've got your full diagrams, which I'll be showing you during the tutorial. And all at the bottom here, more, more text, more diagrams, all the way through the entire process from beginning to end. Uh, and as you can see, the artwork on them, we try and make it as accurate as possible so they look fantastic um, on, the, uh, on the finished design there. Uh, so let's get started, shall we? I'll just open up my little goodies here and I'll get them out for you to see exactly what it is that I've got. So. Here are my cubes. As I said, I've got a whole strands worth just here. I've got my size 10 Preciosa seed beads. So I'll just put those materials at the bottom again. So that's the golden pink crystal cube. I've got the satin gold size 10 Preciosa seed bead. I've got a gold color, uh, gold plated lobster clasp and extension chain. And then I think I've got here, it's the light gold color Spidalon thread, which is this one just here, which thankfully I don't need to use this one up because I've got the spool of it. So I'll just make myself a little spool, uh, just cut myself off some. Let me just, give me a few seconds. I've just got to grab myself some scissors so I can cut it. Just give me a few seconds now. Uh, where are they hiding? Here, snippy, snippy, snippies. Where are you? No, they're hiding from me. I should have found these earlier. I didn't think about them. Uh, where are they hiding? Oh, well, just give me a second. I'll find them in just a second. Either way, oh, no, I've got a handy. Maxine's come down to help me. So she's looking. She found them straight away, obviously. Clearly, I'm just not very good at looking for things. Uh, so first thing we're going to do, you need to cut yourself a piece of thread that is around about a meter and a half long. It's probably not going to be enough to do the entire brace in one go, but that's okay because when it comes to making that, uh, you can just stitch your little pieces. Uh, you can stitch the threads together with a weaver's knot, which I might show you that a bit later on if I, if I remember to do it. Remind me later on. Um, uh, and I shall show you that. So I'm just cutting myself a little piece of thread now. And let me just get my first diagram up on screen for you to see. Ooh, I'm a bit too far ahead of myself. Wait a minute. Let's go back a bit, shall we? Forgot to reset the, the diagrams back to the beginning. Here we go. So, uh, no, one more. There we go. First things first, I need to pick up 
two little seed beads and one crystal cube. So uh, as long as I've got both of those, I just got to pick up both and I'm going to weave around. So you can see the thread, the thread, the dot there is where my thread starts and uh, the arrow is where my thread ends. So I'm just going to pop that into the corner now so that you can see. Uh, I'm going to just use my little snips now that I've got them uh, and cut that little piece just there. Uh, thank you very much. Get myself a few little cubes off of my thread here. Here we go. So you can see how sparkly they are. Aren't they amazing? Um, they are absolutely beautiful little beads and I love working with them. Anyway, so I've got my little thread here. First thing I'm going to do is pick up my, I'll just move a few things out the way and I'll zoom in so we can see better what it is exactly that I'm doing. So just give me a second there to zoom in. There we go, perfection. Um, good morning to Kelly, who's just joined us. Thanks for watching, uh, Kelly. I'm glad that you've joined us. Don't forget everyone to like and share this video so that lots of other people can join in on the fun. Because if we get them on while they're live, I can answer all of their questions too. So I've picked up my two little seed beads just here and I'm gonna pick up one crystal. And much like the diagram in the corner, I'm going to go through all the beads and then leaving myself a tail that's about maybe 20 or 30 centimeters long because I'll use that towards the end. Let's turn up my brightness again, shall we? Oops, wrong way. Uh, there we go. That's a bit better, isn't it? We can see now. Oh, no, overdid it. There we go. So yes, so what I'm going to do is just go back through these two seed beads again in the same direction. Uh, so here we go. Let's just pop that in there and up through those two beads. Now, don't forget, you want, we are going to want to use this tail thread. So give yourself a nice maybe 20 or 30 centimeter piece so that you've got um, enough to make the other end of your clasp section. Let me just move the camera slightly so it's a little closer to me so that I'm, because I'm a bit better at not getting out of screen when it's just that tiny bit closer to me. So where are we now? Here we go, that's much better. And now I should hopefully be able to stay nicely in screen the whole time. So um, I'll work nice and flat on the table so you can see everything I'm doing as well, because I know lots of people say that they prefer how close I get just because they can see everything. So that's the first step that I need to do now. What we do here, we're going to create our little flat section. So if we have a little look, we're going to create the full width of our bracelet just here. So I've added the first little section. I need to add two more little sections of a cubes and seed beads. So it's kind of like creating a little ladder stitch as we were. I'll just change that diagram in the corner there. See that? So what I'm going to do, I'll just make it nice and big for you. I'm going to go through the crystal again so that I'm coming out of the crystal that I added in the very, very beginning. And I'm gonna pick up two little seed beads. So through the crystal. It doesn't matter too much if you can see the threads along the edge at the minute. It will tighten, but also they're going to get hidden by um, my, my working. So it will work out that they're nice and hidden at the end. So there we go. Now I'm coming out of my cube. I'll pick up two seed beads like so. And then I'm going to go again through that cube once more. So just through that cube. Oops, missed it. There we go, through the cube, pull it tight, tight, tight. And hopefully that will sit nicely in position once I pull all my threads tight. So there we go, I've got, I'll turn it sideways so you can see, the same little piece. I've got a, two seed beads, a cube and two seed beads. Let's get even closer. I love how close this camera lets me get, just so you can absolutely see what I'm doing. Um, but yes. So let's just continue along. The next thing that we're going to do is add another cube. So like we did just before, we're gonna go through the seed beads that I just added, pick up a cube, and then back through those seed beads that I added just a second ago. So let's just pop it back in the corner, pick up, I need to go through the two seed beads I just added, like so. 
pick up a cube, wait for me to get there, there we go, get everything nice and tight, pick up a cube, there we are, and um, ooh, I just got caught on a, a little demo piece, I'll move that out of the way for a minute. Um, so Alexis is asking, what camera do I use? Well, I'm currently using my, uh, my webcam. Actually, I've just got a, a good decent webcam that I use um, and then there's a little software that I a little software program that I have that sort of gives me control of it uh, while I'm streaming. Um, but yeah, nothing, nothing special. It's pretty much just a, a regular, a regular old little, little camera. Um, Monty in, in New Hampshire, USA. Thank you very, very much for joining us. Um, who else have we got on? I should have a little look and see because I, I do love it when people come on. I really like uh, how much people talk to each other. Kelly asks, how big is the hole in the crystal? I'll just show you one, actually. So the crystal, I think it's around about a millimeter sized hole. Let's bring it nice and close to the camera here. Just get it in focus first and then I can show you. So there's that little hole there. I think it's around about a millimeter, that hole there. So if you need to know, um, it's pretty much just whatever you can get your, your thread through a few times. That's sort of important uh, size-wise. So let's continue on now. I've added on, and now I'm pretty much back exactly where I am as per the diagram. So let's continue on to the next step. So you can see just here, I need to just repeat again until I'm the full width. So three pairs of seed beads and three pairs of uh, three sets of crystals as well. Um, so let's just add them in. So I need to go down that crystal, thread, 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 thread. There we go. Pick up two seed beads. Oops, got stuck on my finger. Pick up two seed beads. How's everybody doing today, by the way? Um, I want to know what you've been getting up to lately. So tell me, how's the weather where you are? Because here it's not nearly as lovely as it was the last couple of days. It was absolutely fantastic here it reminded me of being back home in in sydney in sort of late spring or sort of early summer where it was absolutely beautiful crystal clear skies and everything uh, but now today it's gone back to being that usual uk weather because that's where i am at the minute um in cheltenham here and it is rather dreary um, but yeah, how's the weather where you are? Tell me. And plus, I do want to know, what have you been getting up to lately? Because I have been, with my spare time and a bit of help from Jermaine, have been doing my gardening as well. So I don't usually do too much gardening. It's my first little bit that I've been doing lately. But since I bought uh, my first home not too long ago, uh, I've been getting my garden all beautiful and lovely, but with a lot of help from Jermaine. She's been doing the... Uh, the main handiwork um, of of the garden lately, and I've just been reaping the rewards more than anything. There's we've been growing strawberries and they're coming together really nicely. Uh, I'm really liking uh, having a, a little garden there. So you can see now, uh, just coming back to my demo just here, um, Cindy's on vacation in West Virginia. Lovely. Um, so uh, yes, I've got my little piece just here. So now what I'm going to do is start herring boning to make that beautiful um, um, beautiful sort of dancing effect. Um, is it size 15? No, my seed beads are size 10. They're from Preciosa, which is the same as a Japanese size 11. Um, so if you have like Toho's or Presi uh, or, or Mayuki's, uh, you'll need size 11. But if you have um, the Czech size beads, because the, se the sizing is a bit different, they're exactly the same size, uh, but they are size 11 in the Japanese, size 10 in the Czech. So I'll just show you now what we're going to do. With my thread coming out of the top of that crystal, I'm going to create the first little herringbone stitch. So I'll pick up two seed beads and one cube, and then I'll pass down the next um, little seed bead uh, group along. So let me just pop it in the corner there. So I'm working with this thread just to make it match the diagram. I'm going to flip my work so it looks like I'm a right-hander because I am a lefty, but here we go. Now it looks like I'm a right-handed person. So 
I'm coming out just here. Uh, whoops, I'm a bit too far over. There we go. So that's the spot I need to be. So I'm coming out of this little crystal here. So like I said, first thing I need to do, looking at the diagram in the corner, pick up two little seed beads and a cube, and I'll just thread them down nice and close. Uh, oh, I keep catching on the on the edge of my, my bead mat there. There we go. Um, so Damon says it's crystal clear, crisp winter here in Brisbane. I'm jealous. Um, who else have we got? Alexis. Um, it's dry, sunny, and warm. Good for her. I'm I'm very, very jealous. Um, oh, Evelyn. She's growing strawberries as well. Thanks uh, for letting us know, Evelyn. I'm, I'm really pleased that everybody's sort of conversing with us and getting in. Um, I'll just pop at the bottom because we've had a few questions about what we're making with. Uh, here is the little... Um, bit of text just there that tells you what I'm using at the moment. So I'm using the um, the products in the Magenta Sunset Kit. So coming out of here, I need to go down this little pair of seed beads just here. So I'll show you that diagram again in a second once the ticker is sort of gone one time or maybe two just so that you can see what it was that, that I'm using. But as you can see, see how it doesn't quite sit straight? Fantastic. That's what I'm wanting. So see how it's a little bit skewed that that little cube just there. That's great because this is giving me that dancing effect that you that you want. So you could obviously just use square stitch or peyote or something like that and you'll get a much more even sort of look, but that's not very fun when it comes to wearing, I think having that dancing effect gives you so many more places that the crystals can sparkle and catch the light. So look at that, you get so much more sparkle just by using a slightly more interesting stitch. So coming back to my diagram here, I've added the first little herringbone stitch there. Now let's add the next. So again, I'll pick up two little seed beads and one crystal. Oh, wait, sorry, I almost missed a step there. So see how at the bottom, wait, let's just go back. I almost missed it. I need to go back up the cube beside. So don't forget to make that, uh, to do that. Otherwise you'll make a mistake. So up the cube again, there we go. Now I'm in position, I can pick up Let's go to the next step. Two little seed beads. One, two. And one crystal cube. And let's pull that down and go into the next seed bead. And as I pull it, pull it, pull it, pull it, pull it, we get the next little dancing. Whoops, I'm a bit out of shot there. We've got the next little cube doing its its little jiggly dance. So I'll go up that cube there. It's handy using Spidalon thread. So I'll just show you the products that we've got in our little category for um, for making these products. Um, if I show you just here, here we go. Um, so this is, if you head to the link in the description, you can see if you're enjoying this tutorial and you want to make it yourself, but you don't want to pay postage for a kit, here is the pattern. It's 20% off uh, for the next week or so. So definitely jump on and grab the pattern if you want to make it. Um, we are selling our dancing cube kits where there's two colors here, another few more down here as well. Um, any three you want, just go in and pick the three that you like best. Any three for 30 pounds. So you get 20% off if you do it that way. They are on sale um, at 11 each, but any three and you'll get double discount and it works out 30 pounds. I do have here all of our different colors of Spidalon thread in case you want that. I have a selection here of my Preciosa size tens. We do have a lot more, so if you fancy, you can always go directly to the Preciosa size 10 page. And then I've got here all of our beautiful crystal cube beads uh, that you can get. See, there's the golden purple that I'm using, uh, the, sorry, the golden pink that I'm using today. There's the, that one's my favorite, the, uh, the matte blue grass, just because it gives you that really sort of interesting matte shape look. And then look, there's all the colors that we have just here, lots more. But yeah, head on to that link in the description if you want to get those little um, 
piece is just there. So let's just pop that out the way and come back now to me working over here. Uh, so um, next thing I need to do now is head on to the next step and I need to, this one's a little bit more complicated this step. So I'll put it nice and big so that you can see. To finish off that step, I need to add on one seed bead and one crystal. So just the same as before. But what I'm going to do after that is a little bit of a, a wiggle to get me back into position so that I'm coming out of the crystal. Uh, that's where I want to be. So let's just start now by adding the next little herringbone stitch. So I'll just come back to me. Um, I'll pick up my two seed beads and one cube and I will just head down, get, get a few things out of the way. Um, head down that seed bead just there on the end like so, and pull, 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 get that um, twisted, and then pull it nice and firm, come on now, what are you doing to me, there we go, so now that's down here at the bottom, and then I'll just show you it nice and big again, I'm, I'm, I'm on this thread just here, this one's my tail thread, so we'll ignore this thread, just pretend that tail thread isn't there, and what I'm going to do is, if you have a look, where I go down, I go down through the seed beads, up through the crystal beside, and then I just jump across without going through the seed beads that I just added and just through the crystal. So I'll just show you it here. So I'm coming out of this seed bead. I'll come up this crystal and then I'll jump across and into this crystal up here. I'll forget about this and I'm coming into here and that will allow me to continue on. So let's just head up that crystal. Try not to pierce your thread or anything like that. Get nice and firm. There we go. And then up this little crystal just here, which sort of helps it get back into that dancing shape afterwards, uh, just because it sort of pulls it back towards its um, little off skew if position. So just keep your thread out of the way so it doesn't get caught on any of the corners or anything. And then just pop that there so that it sits very nicely right there at the bottom so if you pull a little tighter it'll just hide that thread a bit more there we go and now i'm in position to sort of continue on adding more beads so what i'll do i'll just show you nice and big exactly the same as before i'm going to come back in the direction i've just gone working in that same way so i'm going to pick up two seed beads and a cube and then I'm going to go down that little seed bead just here. Pull it nice and firm once I'm ready. Pull, 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 get everything twined. Try not to get everything twisted. Now, I have promised myself today I'm going to actually finish my cup of tea. So I'm going to have a big gulp of that right now. Ah, lovely. Uh, Vicky's just joined in. She said, beautiful. It looks so complicated, but it's such a simple stitch. Thanks. Don't forget your cupper again. I did. But yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks for that, Vicky. I'm glad that it's nice and clear and easy to follow. But you'll find that's often the case with jewellery. So uh, just, just, uh, I'll just tell you what I'm doing really quick before I do it. I'm going to go through that crystal just here like that. Uh, if I can find the hole, if it's going to behave for me. Um, but yes, um, that's the thing with jewellery. Very, very regularly, it's just a very simple little stitch that you need to learn. And then you just repeat, 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 repeat until you're finished. That's the great thing about jewellery making. Um, it's very, very common that all you do is, I'll just show it to you here on the side. Actually, I'm going to show you with the matte green because that one's my favorite. So there's those matte green beads. Don't they look amazing? Um, but yeah, so you can see it's just doing that same stitch and then we repeat, 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 repeat until we get to the very, very end. So I'll just do a few more rows. I might go, because like I said, I'm not going to do the full process of making the entire bracelet because that would take, you know, several hours at the rate I that I'd make beads. Um, but yeah. So I'll just add on my two seed beads and my two crystals 
and then uh, two two and my and my crystal cube there, and go down that next little pair of seed beads. So wait, let's change the the step diagram. Oh no, not yet. Um, I'll come to that in a minute. So I will continue, 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 and I'm just going to add on my little herring bones as I go. So you'll see that they're separated. See how that's separated? Doesn't matter. We're going to connect them back to each other later on when we redo our little piece just there. So now I'll go up the crystal. See, this is the step that would join your herringbone pieces together. See that? There we go. So now I've joined these two together. So when it comes to it, that'll be the same as joining these two together, you know? Um, so I'll pick up two seed beads and a cube. And again, I'm going to do like this, but it's on the other side now. I'm going to pick up my little crystal. I'm going down this one here. And then we do a bit of a wiggly woo, as I like to call it. Um, Victoria in Boston, good morning. She only found us last Saturday and now she's hooked. Thank you, Victoria, for joining in. By the way, if, like Victoria, you haven't seen us before and you want more of what you're seeing today, head to the link which is in the description to subscribe um, because then we will let you know every time that we're going to be doing these live tutorials you'll get an email just before the show goes live and um, it will let you know to jump on and start watching the great news is if you do also do that we send a link that's going to be on the bead spider website which is useful for two reasons one you can watch it right there live if you want to because we have that available but if you come to the email a little bit late and you've missed the live show doesn't matter we put it on demand for you to watch whenever you want to whenever you're ready uh, straight there from that link on the bead spider website so even if the show finished and you get to the email the very next day if you click the link it will take you to the on-demand spot right then and there for you to start watching. So in case uh, I didn't quite show you properly, I just did my little wiggle. So I went down the seat bead, up the cube, skip these ones, and then up into the other cube just to bring it back into position. So I'm just going to continue on and I'm going to do a few rows. I'll do them in lefty view now just for you left-handed people. So I flip it back now and I'm just going to do that. So definitely now's a great time because I'm paying attention, more attention to the comments. If you've got questions, if you want to know things, if you want to ask things, ask away because I'm all ears right now. I'm going to just do a few rows so you can watch while I do that. And this is going to be the perfect opportunity to uh, take your questions. Um, don't forget, guys, send your pictures to live at beadspider.co.uk. I just pop it there at the bottom. And I will try and get you featured later in the show of what you've been making, what you've been doing. Doesn't have to be jewelry, whatever you want. Um, and then that will uh, try and get that shown towards the end. Uh, but yeah, what what other what other questions do people have for me? Um, what do they want to know? What can I do to help? Um, you know, let's let's sort of answer some questions. Um, I'm just going to continue along. I'll show you in a second. You'll get to see it in just a moment how easy it is. So see how these two bits are separated. I'm about to stitch them together. This is the handy thing about doing herringbone in this way, this flat way, is that as you come to them, you sort of stitch these bits that seem loose uh, to each other. So it works out really, really clean and neat once you get a bit further down. See how nice it's all coming together? And now, once I go up that cube, that just brings those two pieces nicely together. There we go, look at that. So that starts to bring them together. And then when I stitch the next ones, that'll bring them even closer. So let's just continue on. Um, here we go. So, um, Alexis, what are your thoughts on double stranding for strength? Yes, you can do if you want to. One thing, though, is because you have to go through quite a few beads quite a few times, it can get a little cumbersome towards uh, once you're trying to go through beads. So it's uh, multiple times. So it's kind of important that if you want to double strand thread it, which I recommend if you're making to sell, that's a great uh, a great little tip just there, is um, use a double strength. Oh, did I just add on extra beads? No, I didn't add on my 
cube. Yes, I did. I've, I've added on too many beads. Maybe I'm not quite paying enough attention. Um, I'll just take that off. Uh, yeah, yeah. You can definitely um, double strand the thread if you want to. Um, but as I said, if you do do that, you may run into some troubles if your crystals or your seed beads don't quite have big enough uh, holes you might find that getting through or if you're using a thicker thread uh, than this one because this one's quite a fine lovely high quality thread um, if you're using a thicker one you might find that um, that that you sort of struggle to go through a few beads so now I've got that back in position I've got two seed beads in a cube not four seed beads uh, so um, any other questions um, Oh, Evelyn asks, could you please do a 12 mil Rivoli bracelet design, please? Do you know what, um, Evelyn? I have a feeling if you have a look on the Bead Spider um, website, there is a kit that we do which is called the Starburst Bracelet. That was designed by one of the lovely ladies who works for us. Uh, Rose is her name. She designed that beautiful bracelet, and I have a feeling that one is using 12 mil Rivoli's in a really nice bracelet uh, pattern, and you're sort of creating little stars around your 12 mil Rivoli's. So if you haven't seen that one before, head to the Bead Spider website and have a little look on there and see if you can find it um as i said I, I think it's called the the starlight bracelet we do also have a necklace which is uh making uh with a with a rivoli in the center again inside of a star which is called the star burst one's the star burst and one's the starlight i can never remember which is which but if you have a look on there there might also be a tutorial in our video tutorial section because if you haven't seen it um we have actually got i'm do you know what let's let's have a little look i'll show you it um and then i'll tell you what i'm going to do next week as well um if we have a little look back on the bead spider website so i'll just show you what's coming up in future shows as well but i'll get to that in a minute um if you have a look on the video tutorial section which is in the main menu on desktop or if you're on your mobile, it's there under the three little um, lines in the corner to open the menu. Uh, you'll see video tutorials. And then right at the top, um, let's have a look. See, that these are all of our tutorials that we have. So these first few are the live ones that I've done. Um, you know, there's class tutorials, all sorts. So if you haven't been watching and you missed some of those, this one was very popular, the the, um, the Rainbow Hearts, which the pattern is for free if you want to jump on there. Um, we might have one for that Rivoli design. Let's have a look. But we do have a lot of videos, but it turns out that there's, uh, see, there's a Rivoli necklace just here on the left. Uh, but yeah, we do have a lot, a lot of videos that we've done in the past. Um, and then we also have, if I come a bit further down, um, We've got some technique videos here. Look, lots of different beading stitches in there. St. Petersburg, uh, beaded Pico. Um, and then, yeah, we've got some product videos down the bottom. But anyway, just going back to where I was, I'll show you a link in the, I might put a link in the comments in a minute, but um, if you wanna see what's coming up, it's our video, here, I'll show you it on the menu, video tutorial related products. So if you go in there, um, there you go. So you can see up next, I've got the honeycomb tutorial, and then we're going to do on July the 4th, which is a very special day in the US, but um, I'm going to be doing the netted crystal tutorial product. So I'll just show you some pictures of that. Oh, I haven't even been showing. What a silly person I am. Uh, there we go. So there it is just there. This is the... Um, Aren't I silly? I completely forgot to switch it over so you could see. So anyway, this is what I'm going to be doing, the honeycomb. And here is the netted crystals that I'm doing. Um, let me just show you very quickly again. I'll, I'll just go back really quickly since I'm a silly. Uh, but yeah, those are the two different designs that I'm going to be doing. And if I go back, I'll just show you in the menu where you can see all those videos. So uh, at the top here, I've got my menu. The video tutorials are just here. And the video tutorial related products 
is just here. And this section where it says video tutorial related pro products will show you what's upcoming. So if you want to make along with me next week um, on Wednesday or Saturday, because that's when I do my shows, Wednesdays and Saturdays, 1 p.m. every time, uh, head to that one. But otherwise, which I'll just show you real quick again, the video tutorials, here they all are. We have lots and lots and lots of tutorials. You can load even more and it will take you through all of those different tutorials. And then, like I said, we've also got technique videos down here, which again, you can load more technique videos at the bottom. Um, but yeah, there's lots and lots of videos that we have. I think somewhere near a hundred. Um, so definitely head on to our little Bead Spider website tutorial section, because that's where you can find all of that information. So um, like I said, what I'm doing next week uh, here is that honeycomb bracelet, which I've got one. I've got a few actually just here so I can show you them in real life um, of my, my honeycomb bracelet. Um, so that's just there. That's the sort of the design. It comes in lots of different colors. Uh, they look super effective and that is using macrame. So um, there's, as I said, lots of different colors. Uh, I'll just show you on my video here. Um, so if I, oh, I need to zoom out. So I'm using macrame here. This one shows it really clearly. Uh, so you can see I do little macrame knots in between and it creates that beautiful honeycomb effect along. But I'll also be showing you how to make this fantastic sliding knot clasp. So if you have a look, I can just press my fingers on it and it will pull that side, pull that side, or when I want to tighten it on my wrist, so you just put your wrist in there and then you can just pull these threads, pull these threads. And then you can see it's sort of like a one size fits all because look how small that goes. Uh, but yeah, again, that's using six by four crystals and smooth and slinky cord. But head to that page um, if you want to have a little look. Ah, Jermaine's also sent a link to that Starburst kit that I was telling you about, Evelyn. Um, but yeah, so there's that. So if you fancy having a go at those, that's what I'm doing on Wednesday. And then on Saturday, this one is a absolutely stunning design. I'm going to show you two different ways to do it. One that makes a beautiful bangle, which is that one just there. Um, and it is also uh, a graduated necklace version. But this is the bangle. I, I forgot to add some pictures of the, the, um, the other one there. But you can see these are those really lovely... Um, bracelets that you can get um, of the Hollywood. So both of those are available from that section that I showed you um, uh, on the website. Uh, but yeah, they're, they're also on sale. So let me just continue along. Have we had some more? Oh, right. Um, oops. Uh, yes. So uh, hello to Paula. Thank you for joining us. Let me just continue along. I'll do a few more rows. And then once I do that, I'll show you how to graduate down to um, that smaller size to add on your clasp. So just a few more little rows so that you can see how it stitches together as I do it. Um, and then I'll add on that clasp. So down that side there. Oops. Here we go. Pull, pull, pull. If it's a bit loose at the minute, it doesn't matter because it's going to tighten when I pull my thread. That's the great thing about this spidal on thread. All of our spidal on threads, they do come with a needle included. So you get thread and needle every time. So you don't need to worry about that because um, you can never have too many needles, especially if you um, bend them or break them, you'll have replacements. Uh, but yeah, the great thing about this is it's a bonded monofilament cord. So it's extremely strong. It doesn't fray because of the bonding. Um, and because it's a monofilament as well. So that's a really fantastic feature about this, but it's super strong, which is always useful when you're doing your jewelry making. Like uh, when Alexis asked if she should use double threading, with this particular thread, you might not need to because it is very, very strong uh, and it doesn't break um, so easily. Um, but yeah, so I'll just continue on. I'll finish this row and then I'll just do one last row and that will bring me into position to show you how to taper it down to the end. Um, by the way, in case you've only just joined in, don't forget to like and share this video because we want to spread the word. Um, if 
if you uh, you know if you're part of any bead groups maybe share it with them so that they can see how easy this tutorial is or if you've got friends who are beginners and they haven't done much jewelry before you can even tag them in the comments here so they can see it um, Alana good morning uh, no good afternoon from South Africa thank you for joining all the way from South Africa Ooh, I'm not paying attention um, that's great. I love how international and multinational these uh, these videos are. I think that it's great um, that that so many of you join in from so many places. Uh, it just really gives a great community feel. Um, Damon, he says, I just love this magenta sunset golden pink crystal bead. Um, I love it too. Um, hello to Sue. Thanks for joining in. Um, but yeah, has anyone got any questions that they want to ask as well? Now's a great time. Um, and then just in case you haven't done it, I'll just pop it on the screen real quick. Uh, get featured on the show. You can be on the show. Uh, send us your pictures of what you've been making, what you've been doing to live at beadspider.co.uk. Um, if you tell us where you are and what you've been doing and what your name is and all that sort of information, uh, it gives us, makes it a little bit more interesting when we put it in the video. So definitely, um, Send in your pictures uh, and get onto the show. Um, and then one other thing, which I'll just pop it at the bottom. If you head to the link in the description, which is uh, about subscribing, because the email address is also down there in the link. Um, uh, yeah, it's it's a, a great way to, to know when we're going to be doing more videos. So um, that's a, a great way of of staying in the loop as it were being part of the the bead spider community so i'm just going to do this one last one and then i'm going to show you how to taper this little piece so essentially where you need to stop is at wait i'll just bring myself into position as though i was going to do the last one but we're not going to do it quite yet so what i'm going to do is here we go let's just show you the instruction nice and big skip and skip um <clears throat> so i i might show you on the tail thread how to change threads but uh, i'll come back to it a bit later after i've done this one end um but yes so if you can see the diagram um that just there in the top corner that's where we need to be right now so if i have a little look uh, i'll show you it in the corner there there we go so that's essentially where I'm at. This is where we need to be when it comes to start the process of tapering your edge there. Sue Pope, how much is the kit, please? So if you buy just the one kit on its own, uh, it's 11 pounds, which I think probably equates to about maybe if you're in the US, um, maybe somewhere around about 14 US dollars. But we have a Dover discount special where we're doing any three kits. You can head to the link in the description um any three kits that um that you you get of this of this um dancing cubes you get double discount uh, so three for 30. um would this work in the tubular herringbone it probably would i think if you did it uh four wide great question damon if you did it four wide or maybe five depends how thick you want it to be you'll just have that little bit extra space to to turn it into a tube and then you'll get that really nice uh dancing effect all the way up the tube great question um but yeah that's a great idea um so let's start tapering so first thing we do we're going to add on two seed beads and a um and a cube there um and uh, and then this time, instead of going back up the queue, I'm going to make sure I go up those seed beads. Um, Kelly, have you tried doing wire work to make jewelry pieces? Yes, we have some kits that we've done that. Um, if you have a look, uh, our beaded flowers, they're really popular um, ones for... Um, uh wire work we also have the valiant i think it's on the website still which is beautiful with gemstone chips a lot of people said they want to use gemstone chips that's a great design which i'm thinking i might do a video on it um we've also got a a, a little bead spider made with our micro crystals um, which are fantastic little beads if you don't know about our micro crystals they are crystals that are the same size as size 11 seed beads so you can just swap them interchangeably um, lots of great questions thank you everyone for being so uh involved i really really like how um 
how how much of a community this is. Um, Carolyn, it seems you've ordered almost all of our kits. We, we keep mentioning ones that you could try, and already she's done them. Clearly, she's uh, she's caught the bug, as we like to say. Da, 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 da. Um, but yeah, um, let me just continue on now, and I'll show you how we're going to taper it. So as you can see in the top corner there, we want my thread now coming out just one step closer in with these seed beads. So I'm coming out the seed beads just here. There we go, like that. And now I'm in position. So let's just have a look at the next diagram. So it's quite similar now, but we're one step inward. So now this time I need to, because I want to um, keep the pattern sort of the same, we're going to add on the cube first. So that's a bit different this time. Usually if we have a little look back at a couple of steps, we're adding the seed beads and then the cube. This particular time, I'm adding the cube and then the seed beads. That way it stays in that same pattern uh, that we get where it's sort of cross hatch dancing. Um, but yeah, so what I'll do, I pick up my cube first, then my two seed beads, and then I'll go down the cube beside. So see how they're split? This is going to join those two little pieces together, but it also brings us one step inwards uh, towards where we want to be. So that's one little step there. Then what I'll do, I'll just bring myself up through the seed beads so that I'm in the same position as my little diagram there. If I can get there. Uh, there we go. Well, no, no. It's a bit fiddly for me today. There we go. Obviously, this would be easier if you're holding it in your hands, but I always do my tutorials flat because I want it to be super clear for all of you. And another thing I always do is make sure that we're... I know my... If you if you watch my very first tutorial, I had a bit of a technical di uh, difficulty and ended up doing the uh, the tutorial sort of sideways, like... like, uh, like um, oh, wait. I haven't put my thing up there. But yeah, I, I accidentally put my, my tutorial sideways so you couldn't really see what I was doing. But usually, thankfully this time we've got everything sorted so that we can have it horizontal because when you're watching sideways, uh, you know, when it's when it's vertical, okay, maybe it's all right on the on the phone if you're watching on the phone. But lots of people say that they want to watch on the television. They, they stream YouTube to the television. You don't want to be watching it with the camera sideways. So if you watched my first stream, that's how I did that one, which was not the best stream I've ever done. But, you know, we're improving, we're getting better, and I'm trying to make every stream clearer and clearer for you guys. Oops, I just made a mistake. I didn't put my crystal first. I need to stop chatting away and pay more attention to what I'm doing. But, yeah, um, so, yeah, as I said, I, I mean, because I do them nice and flat, when you're making it yourself, it's much easier if you're holding it in your hands. But if, uh, but for demonstration purposes, I try and do them flat. You can get a much better tension if you're holding it in your hands. But uh, when you're demonstrating, like I am, no one is going to see anything. Um, Cindy, you have to go today. No problem. Um, Cindy, if you like, because you're sort of missing out on on the tapering part, I will send you a link. Um, so anyone else who wants the link so that they can watch this video later, let me know and I will reply to you with the link saying, um, uh, you know, saying how you can watch it on demand later. So uh, anybody who wants that, if you just type the word subscribe into uh, the comments section there, I will try and send you um, a link. It works really well on Facebook. It's a little bit more difficult on YouTube, but um, but yeah, if you're on Facebook and you want to watch, um, if you head to the link in the, uh, if you s just type the comment subscribe, I will, I will put that, I'll send you a little link that to that so you can, so you can see, but thank you for joining us, Cindy. Um, so, um, so you can see just here, I've added in my next few beads and what I'm going to do, uh, is again, I'm going to go up the seed beads and then finish with the little crystal cubes. So I'll make it nice and big. Uh, whoops. What am I doing? Yeah, there we go. Um, fade that in there. There we go. So you can see I've added those crisp, the crystal and the seed beads now, and then I'm going to go all the way down and then back up um, and through the 
little crystal cube just now. Um, also, by the way, don't forget, if you want to be notified when we do other videos, um, there's a little link in the description that I've got there that will let you sign up to our newsletter because we will let you know every time that there's a new video coming. Um, so that's a great way to stay in the loop if you if you want to be making sure you're, you're seeing all the shows. Um, so here we go. Let's just get myself back into position now through that last little crystal, and then we're ready to continue. Um, uh, Barbara, thanks for joining in. Uh, we got lots of people writing in subscribe. Clearly, they all want to like make the link, but oh, I'm just off screen. Sorry about that. Um, there we go. So uh, there we are now. I'm pretty much in that exact same position, um, just there. Uh, and now let's just continue along. Let's add the next little one just here. So if we have a look, I'll put it nice and big. Um, Marigold, do you have to pull the thread very tight? Yes and no. I mean, it doesn't have to be super tight. I mean, you can see how I've been doing it. I haven't been pulling it really, really tight. It stays relatively firm. Uh, that's a, a positive of this particular thread, though. Because it's bonded, you get um, it, it, it's very firm. It holds really tight and well. So that's... um a great little feature of this thread. So you don't need to be as tight because the thing with crystals, if you pull too tight, you might cut your thread on the edge of the crystal. So it's sort of a striking a balance of firmness, but uh, tightness, but also not too tight. Um, so let me just show it big. What I'm going to do now is taper the middle of my little um, bracelet here at the back by adding in one last little set. So this time again, I need to do the seed beads first. So I'll just bring over my little screen so you can see. Seed beads first and then the crystal. So that's how this image works. And that's going to give us that middle tapering of the center there. So um, I'll go down these little seed beads here. Same as before. And then pull it nice and tight so that it sits. So there you go. You can see I haven't pulled it too tight, but tight enough that you don't see any gaps in the thread. That's that's all you need to do. Then I'll just go up this crystal and then I'll go through the two seed beads there at the very top. There we are. And now I'll just show you the finished piece, how it's going to look once I've done it in a minute. But... <clears throat> What I like to do for adding on your little clasp sections is to create a little right angle weave. Wait, I'm going to do the lobster first. So I'm going to create like a little right angle weave at the top here. So the best way to do that is to put a little bead at the very, very top. So if we have a look at the diagram, I'm going to thread down again through the whole thing like this. I'm going to go a little bit lower just to make sure everything is um, extra firm. And then I'm going to add on one seed bead there at the very, very top. So as I'll just show you, I'll pick up one seed bead and I'm going to thread down through all these beads and then back up and through that one seed bead one last time. So pick up your one seed bead and this is where I can create my little right angle weave for the clasp. So down here, through these two, get that nice and firm there. There we go. See how nicely that sits at the top? And then I'm going to just go through that crystal. And then the seed beads, so that I'm coming out through that bead that I just added, which is now at the very, very tip of my, my piece just here. So there we go. So what I'll do now, I want to add on my little lobster. So pop it a bit closer there. So I'm going to add my little lobster in now. Um, what I'll do with that, like I said, I'm going to create a little right angle weave. So you can see just here, I've got my diagram. I'm going to pick up one seed bead, my lobster, and one more seed bead. So let's just do that now, shall we? One seed bead. Did I pick it up? No, I didn't. One seed bead through my lobster. And then one more seed bead. Here we go. 
And what I'll do now is to get that right angle weave shape, I'm going to weave back around and through that bead so I'm coming out in the exact same spot that I started in. So pull, 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 pull. By the way, a few people have asked me about my tea. Yes, it's cold, as always. I didn't manage to do it. I promise myself every time I do the show, it's like a running gag, isn't it? The, the tea that never gets drunk. Um, but yeah, so go up there. And now what you can do, I, I recommend this to get it nice and firm because you don't have to go through so many beads. This is why I add that right angle weave. It makes it a lot easier to go through a few times just so that your thread, uh, your clasp is really tight, really secure, not going anywhere. How's everybody finding today's tutorial, by the way? Are we enjoying it? Are we having fun? Um, you know, I want to know, actually, what's been everybody's favorite tutorial? Of those of you who've watched more than the gen, than just this one, what's been your favorite tutorial? I think mine to to make, I really enjoyed doing the, the brick stitch rainbow earrings. That was potentially my favorite. But tell me, what's what's been your favorite tutorial, everyone? I want to get your opinion um, on, on what videos you've liked. Um, and if you're enjoying this one and um, also always, as always, I do love the uh, the feedback on how I could improve because I would love to make our videos. We try and make every single one just a little bit better than the last. So um, like how I've got my diagrams in the corner, didn't used to have those. Um, yeah, let me know what uh, what tutorials I've done that you that you really liked, which what sort of things you want to see in the future. Um, by the way, if anyone um, is feeling kind, uh, please do share do share this video. Um, you know, if you're on Facebook, it's super easy. You just click the little share button uh, next to the like. And then uh, if you're on a bead group, maybe you can share it in there because that's the best place where people want to see these sorts of things. Um, otherwise, you can stick it on your wall. But as always, it's it's very much uh, appreciated. Um, Carolyn recommends that I get a thermal cup for my tea. Do you know what, Carolyn? I think that is a great idea, and I might actually invest in one um, just uh, just to get my tea nice and warm. Um, it's quite fun with all the different mugs that we have. Because it was uh, Jermaine's birthday, mum's birthday, just the other day, um, we with we we all went up and visited um my my sister up in london because uh her and her husband they they had their first child little little leonardo um just the the uh, earlier this year uh so leonardo we had we've got a bit of a running thing in our family where we get people's faces on mugs and give them as gifts i think the first one was one of my nana uh that we gave to herself which was a very funny picture when uh, I think her dentures fell out or something and she did a big laughing smile and someone managed to snap a picture of that. There's also a very cute photo of me when I was younger that was put onto a mug which was given to me and just recently um, on mum's birthday which was on the 23rd so just just a few days ago um, there she received her very first uh, mug of her, her very first grandchild Leonardo so um, you know, she was she was very happy to receive that. So, uh, I quite we 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 have a lot of mugs in our family that we that we like to use. So, what I'm doing right now, by the way, because I feel like I've secured my class pretty well, I'm gonna just weave my thread down so that I can sort of lock everything in place and just tie off my thread so that it's ready to continue down the opposite side. But first thing I'm gonna do. I think we'll just sort of leave this end for now and I'll just tell you how to extend your thread because essentially what we're going to do on this, what we did on this side is what we're going to do on uh, the opposite side uh, at the bottom here. So just imagine uh, Molly Gold says we need, Molly Gold says we need to show those mugs. I don't know if I've got the Matthew mug here, but today's mug, well, I'll show you it afterward. Uh, it's got lots of, um, owls and planty things and all sorts of stuff like that. Um, uh, Sharon, love this stitch with the cubes. 
need to change my colors, may need to purchase some of your cubes. Love the sparkle. Thank you, Sharon. Well, don't forget, if you head to the link in the description, it will show you where all of our little cubes are on sale at the moment, uh, where you can get them. But also, which is a fantastic little thing right now, is we have the kit. So you can get the full kit on sale it's up to 20 percent off if you if you want um if you want to get the double discount on our kit there so uh i'll just weave this round and then let's i'll show you how to do a weaver's knot so that you can extend your thread because odds are you will need to do that at some point you know what i'll just get this out of the way this little thread so that it's pointing in the opposite direction and then i'll show you how to do a weaver's knot um where are we now come on now in you get in you go. There we go. Pull that nice and firm. Just get it out of the way. But yeah, just tie some knots and that'll and that'll get everything sort of firm and tight on the other side there. Um, so, ah, uh, this Thelma. What's the name of this thread? It is called Spiderlon. Um, as I said, the link in the description. You'll find all the products. I'll just put a little thing here of everything that I've made in there so i'm using golden pink three mil crystal cubes satin gold seed beads uh size 10 in preciosa i've got a um, gold plated lobster and extension chain which this is great for making it fit for multiple people um and then um spider on thread yeah, Caroline, you can use a, a size 8 or a jump ring. Exactly. There's a lot of different ways that you can attach your clasps so that they will last better. In fact, maybe better than a, um, a jump ring is a split ring. Uh, split rings work really well just because uh, you don't have to worry about the thread sort of coming through. Also, what size needle do we use? So, uh, Thelma, if you are buying one of our little spider on threads, they come with a needle included which is a size 11 so it's a nice fine needle but you've still got a relatively sizable eye so this is what our threads come like when you get a spider on thread there's enough on here for about two or three projects probably this one's uh, only half length so with the kits we give um, a half length but a uh, the the packs that you get on our website you get double this amount you do get a needle with every single thread um but yeah there's lots of different colors. Again, in the link in the description, uh, you'll find that. So uh, let's do a little weaver's knot, shall we? So that is a good little technique that a lot of people like. So just pretend that I've got my tail thread here. I'm going to just weave it around so that it's sort of coming out in the right position so that I'm ready to start working where I want to. So if we have a little look, I'll just show you the the diagram real quick. We need to weave our thread around so that it is coming out of essentially a little cube one from the end. So it's very, very easy if you use your tail thread and you just start making that little bottom section because all you have to do, my thread is coming out just here. And wait, let me just put the instruction in the corner there. There we go. All I need to do is just weave my thread around. Wait, if I put it upside down, you can maybe see it a little better. Weave my thread around and go down this cube. And it's now perfectly, wait, try not to get it caught. There we go. Perfectly in position to do the other tapered edge of my design there. So see that thread's now coming out the exact same spot. So what we would do, we would create our little tapered edge make our little right angle weave oops sorry wrong button there um here we go there we go i'll make my tapered edge exactly the same as i did just before do my little right angle weave and attach my extension chain to the bottom i won't bother making it because it's exactly the same as what i just did but i will show you that weaver's knot and then i'll tell you so don't run away um i'll tell you what we're going to be doing coming up, what you can, uh, and what sort of great deals we have going on at the moment, because we do have a lot. Um, but yeah, so let me just show you that weaver's knot. I might zoom out a little because it's easier to do it in your hands. I'll try and bring it nice and close to the camera so you can see. So I've got myself some extra thread so just cut yourself a length of thread whatever it is that you would need if you want to add an extra meter or a meter or two one and a half whatever's comfortable for you to work with cut that length of thread off and then what we're going to do is create 
a weaver's knot. So how a, a weaver's knot works, just pretend that you've got almost no thread left. In fact, I'm feeling so confident, I might cut my thread so it's really short. See that just there? Now I've got a really short thread. Um, what I'm going to do is add a weaver's knot onto this. So what you do first, if you, I'll just hold it a little closer in my hand and I'll pop that in focus so that you can see. Um, let's get a little closer maybe. I'm gonna create a loop in my hand just here. And I'm going to take this so that here's my little end section here. I'll take this bit of thread and I'm going to go over the top and hold it in a little pinch just there. So I'll try and do it there. See, see that little cross, right? Get it in focus. See that little cross? So essentially the thread goes under, 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 over the top there. And I'll hold that in my fingers like that just there. I'll get this out of the way just a little bit for a second so that we can see it a little clearer. And then what we're going to do now, I'll just slide it down to give myself a little bit extra thread because if you do this with a little bit extra thread on your tail over here, so this bit, like I said, just to remind you, goes underneath, 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 over the top, over the top, and this is the thread that's over the top. So if you've got yourself a nice little tail section, I'm going to take this now, under this loop, so it goes over on the cross, under the loop, but what I'll do, I'm almost creating like a second loop, and I'll put that loop inside this loop. Then I can let go of my cross, and if I just extend that loop, see how I've got, that was my original loop, and this is my new loop. So what I'll do, I'll just pull this down a little bit smaller, and it creates like a little knot just there at the bottom. And see this loop here? What I'm going to do is just take my short thread that I need to replace. I'll just zoom in and focus so that we can see what I'm doing. Zoom in and focus. So now my thread is inside of this loop. And what I'll do is just pull this a little tighter. And then what works really well is once you've got it almost completely tight, is if you hold this tail thread, Wait, there, see my little tail thread? Let's move this up a little just so that we can see it a little better. So hold the tail thread and one of the threads together. So I might I might hold the two tails together, I think. So there we go, there's two little tails together. Hold them together and then you pull nice and tightly until you hear a little click noise. So wait for it. Don't know if you'll hear it in the camera here, when you pull really tight, it goes click, and you get a really nice firm knot that is now attached. So now I've got, see that? I've got my new thread. This was that tiny little piece that I had before. This is the tail that I had just here. And now this is my lovely long piece at the bottom here. So I'll just zoom out so that I can show you it all just there. Um, Let's just zoom out, here we go. So here is my little tail that I had, very, very short. And you can see it doesn't come undone, but you have to wait until you hear that nice clunking click noise, because that means bang. Now my thread is inside of that little loop knot that I made. So then you can just add on your needle to this piece here. These two bits don't matter so much. I'll leave this one short just in case, and then I'll cut this one short as well. And then what we do, we can just continue weaving along now, and we don't have to worry about our thread coming undone. So now I have all this extended lovely piece of thread now to work with, ready to continue, super duper easy. So I'll just show you it once more very, very quickly with two other new pieces of thread, just to reiterate. So I'll just get two threads just here, and I'll join them together into one, uh, just to show you the technique very, very quickly. So I've got a, whoops, there we go. I've got a short thread, which is this one here, and I've got a long thread. I'll create my loop. So this tail, I'll give myself a nice decent amount. I'll go over the top like that, so that I've got a cross. Create a little loop in this bottom piece, and then go inside the loop from the bottom to the top. Try and bring it a bit closer so we can see. So that loop is now inside here. 
go in there, grab the loop, and then this piece and my tail piece, I'll just bring them together, hold them together, and then all I need to do is, whoops, did I let go? Yes, I let go of the wrong one. Sorry about that. Let's just do it again real quick. Oh, I didn't put it. Yeah, yeah. So create my loop over the top. This piece goes inside there. There we go. Grab that loop, pull that tight, and then there we go. See that? And then that means I've got it nice there. There we go. Put this thread inside that loop now. Hold my tails together and let it get smaller, smaller, smaller. It's back out of the way there. There we go. Get it nice and small and then pull it. You can let go of the tail one now and then just give this a good old welly until it clicks. You'll hear it go click and then you've got one long piece of thread now. So that's essentially absolutely everything that you need to do when it comes to extending your thread. It's a very, very easy process. Obviously, if you prefer, if you're a bit more old school and sort of prefer rather than just attaching the threads together, you can also weave your thread back down, tie a few knots and just bring in a whole new thread if you prefer. Um, so let's have a little look and see if we had some pictures sent in. So don't forget, I'll just show it to you once more. Um, if you want your pictures on the show, it's probably going to be a bit too late for today's show, but I will put your pictures on for Wednesday morning. Any that come in between now and um, Wednesday morning, um, I will try and get you featured on the show on Wednesday. But otherwise, um, if you've done it, I'm just going to add in the pictures that people have done. Email to live at beadspider.co.uk. If you want to just copy that email address, it's up in the description. So you can just copy it directly from there. Um, and then all your pictures, I will, whoops, wait a minute. I will show them. I got a bit premature there. I haven't added all the pictures in. Only two so far. Um, yep, and I will show them all on the show at um, at the end. So let's see, have I been sent them yet? No, I don't think, Andrew doesn't seem to have sent them through to me yet. I will just leave it for now. Um, I'll just show two that I've had and then we'll come back to them hopefully because uh, Andrew's job, he might be, mum and dad uh, are off in London taking care of uh, helping out with my sister and, and her little son Leonardo. So potentially he's a bit too busy right now to be doing them for me. Hopefully uh, we'll see some come through in a minute, but we'll see. Um, but yeah, if not, uh, they'll all just be on Wednesdays, I guess. But um, yeah, so what I'm going to be doing, don't forget if you missed last week's show uh, on Wednesday, I made this beautiful gemstone chip cuff. So with memory wire, uh, just get it on just there. Um, <clears throat> yes, I've just been I've just been sent a text. Apparently, uh, he's quite busy with Leonardo and he's forgotten. We'll see if we can get one or two, but um, I'll show a couple uh, if I can. Um, yes, Andrew forgot to do the videos. Uh, but yes, this is what I did last week. So here is the uh, a proper photograph so you can see what it was. Um, if you head to the video tutorial section on the Bead Spider website, you can find that video there. Um, this video that I did today, which is the dancing cubes, don't forget you can get any three um, at 20% off. So double the discount, um, three for 30. But these are the five different colorways that we have just showing up right now. This is the one I did today. Um, this one is my personal favorite, which is, let's have a look. This fella just here. Let's zoom in, shall we? Um, I really like this one. This one, it looks absolutely spectacular in person. Wait, now let's get it in focus. How beautiful are these cubes? They're like matte, so they look absolutely fantastic. And then you've got this almost coffee-colored seed bead in there, uh, which I absolutely love. Um, but yeah, so this one is the the amethyst one, which uh, I showed you. Um, and then <clears throat> this one is great for um, wearing at any occasion. You can see how sparkly those jet black beads are. Um, but yeah. That, uh, it's a nice monochrome looking one there as well. Um, and then finally, this one is great because it works two ways. So you've got your clear side 
and then you've got your metallic silver side. So wait, if I get it in focus, see, there's metallic silver. Wait, let's fold it so we can see it. It's how nice and supple this is. But yeah, see, you've got clear side and you've got the metallic side um, as options when you turn them over. But both are extra glitzy. Um, but yeah, so that's what I did today. And then don't forget, if you're going to be watching next week, I am going to, on Wednesday, be making this honeycomb crystal bracelet just here, uh, which... Uh, where did I put my demo pieces? I've got a few to show you uh, just here. Um, ah, here we go. This one I really like. Wait, let's. I'll just show you a few colours. So this one here is... Oops. Uh, uh, there's this one just here, so you can see how sparkly those crystals are. Look at those. Six by four crystals. And this is our smooth and slinky cord, which is absolutely gorgeous. It's not waxed, so it works really nicely, especially for this sliding knot clasp see how that slides so that you can increase the size so that you can get it on to your wrist let's make it even a little bit bigger i'll get it on my wrist so i'm going to show you how to make this sliding knot clasp uh there we go so then you can just press your finger on it and pull one side press your finger on it and pull the other side just get that whoops i missed one a bit there we go pull 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 and then you end up getting it to fit you exactly so not quite my uh to my complexion but you can see how perfectly you can get that to fit once you've got them all i did that a bit messy but um they it's a really useful little knot that you can learn uh that i will teach you which again i'll just show you it here we've got a few other different colorways that we can use um, but yeah, it's a very, very effective little design where each kit, it makes two bracelets. So you get two different colors of cord and one crystal to make two different matching pairs. And then this one I really love uh, is part of our ruby color set just here. Uh, that's that one there. And then um, if I just show you what will be next Saturday. So don't forget, all of these are going to be on sale. Uh, you can get any of these kits on discount. Next Saturday, July the 4th, uh, I'm doing the Hollywood Crystal Bangle. So because we've got, um, you know, Independence Day in the in the US, we thought we'd go for one of our American-themed uh, designed the Hollywood Crystal Bangle, which I'm also going to show you. There's a necklace version, which is kind of similar, um, but the, the bracelet makes a beautiful bangle and the necklace is graduated. So I am going to show you both of those techniques um, in there. And I just might, if you're lucky, I'm planning to, I just might have a special limited edition color that's going to be coming very, very soon. It's not available quite yet, but I'm thinking I just might do a very special kit um, of that just there. So no promises, but maybe, maybe uh, that's going to be coming part of next week's show. So as I said, Wednesday is the honeycomb. Saturday, I'm doing that beautiful um, Hollywood bangle just there. Um, let me just oops, bring the camera back up. I should uh, should have done this while I was showing you those things. Uh, but yeah, let's just bring me back into shot and say hello to you all. My little cat Sparky's just come to join us too. Um, hello, Sparky. Uh, so there we go. Yes, um, but yeah, thank you all for, for watching. I hope you enjoyed that one. Um, I'll just show the featured pictures that we've, that Andrew's already um, processed for me. I know there's only two at the minute, but they are from Kelly in Australia, who she's always watching. She's watching every week. Um, she's got two little scorpion pictures that she sent us. These are her beaded scorpions. They look amazing. I love those. Um, oh, and I've just been told Andrew has sent me through some extra pictures. So just give me a second. I'll add them in just now uh, for you guys to see. Um, where are we? Here we go. Uh, three more pictures. We've got Pat in Florida, Elaine and Caroline so far. The others might have to wait um, until Wednesday. But 
Uh, here we go. Caroline and Devon, beautiful. They look spectacular. I really like how vibrant those neon, um, those twin beads look. They look spectacular. Great design there, Caroline. That looks quite a bit like um, one of the little element pieces in our Barclay Square bracelet and necklace set that we've got, because we've got two different kits. One's the bracelet and one's the necklace. That little um, piece that you've made as a pendant looks a lot like um, that little piece just there, but that looks spectacular. Fantastic work there by Carolyn. What do you guys all think about Caroline's um, little piece just there? You know, comment in, say hello. Um, definitely, by the way, don't forget you guys, I'd love it if you would share this video. So um, that would be that would be great if you would do that. I would appreciate that. Um, we've also had Elaine in Nottingham. That is spectacular. Great job there, Elaine. I love that little star that you've made there. Um, looks like peyote pieces all stitched together. That looks amazing. Um, thank you very, very much, Elaine, for sending that one in. And then we also have Pat. She's done what looks like uh, a slightly different flat herringbone design there um, of uh, with half tiller beads, which we have a kit, again, very similar to that one, uh, which is our Labyrinth bracelet kit. So uh, if you go onto the Bead Spider website and check out the Labyrinth bracelet, um, I might even have one relatively to hand that I can show you. Uh, just give me a few seconds and I can grab it for you. Um, I did see one earlier. I've got our dancing cubes, which, uh, sorry, not dancing cubes. I've got our... Um, Oh, it's not going to be so easy to show. Um, let me just pop it back here. Our Barclay Square bracelets. Uh, there, whoops, here we go. So that's quite similar to the that beautiful design that was done. Wait, let's get it back in focus now. Uh, come on now. There we go. So that's quite similar to that, that really lovely picture that we got sent in uh, just earlier as well. That's quite similar too. But we do have, as I said, uh, the, the bracelet version of that just here i'll bring it a bit closer so you can see the different colorways um let's get it back in focus there we go which this one uh, just here is our newest color i love that one uh, and we have a necklace design that's the same too um but yeah so thank you to all of you who sent in pictures oh i do have one more i've just been told i've got one more picture so i'll just add in that one extra picture and i will show you guys that one now because i love it when people send in their pictures um where is it hiding from me here we go let's just add it in just give me half a second and i will put that on uh so that you can see from petra petra has sent us a beautiful image uh let's see let's come backwards here we go petra in the netherlands she's just cleaning her bead storage while watching my great video Thank you so much, Petra, for sending in that picture. Your beads are so organized. I wish mine were anywhere near as organized as yours appear to be. It's uh, a big mess sometimes when we come to trying to do our designs. They end up a big jumble uh, <clears throat> all over the place. Um, now, don't think, uh, don't forget, if you are enjoying these tutorials, you can uh, be informed of when we're doing our next ones because uh, we do them twice a week on a Wednesday and a Saturday, like today, um, at 1 p.m. UK time every week uh, so that you can um, head on and find out when we're doing these videos. We'll email you and let you know um, when we're doing our tutorials hit the little button up the top. The link is in the description to subscribe to our newsletter. That is the best way to know when we're doing videos, plus what's going to be in the video. Um, we've got quite a few people saying thank you. Thank you for you all for watching. Um, we've got Damon. He stuck with us the whole show. So thank you very much, uh, Damon. I think you said it was your first show and you've been here the whole time. So very much appreciated. Uh, Marcia says she's looking forward to next week's demos. Um, Sue is on. We've still got Kelly. She always, she's a regular. She's a top fan there um, on, on, um, on our Facebook page. 
lots and lots of people joining in. Oh, and apparently I've got one more photo I can show you guys. Uh, Andrew has just done them very, very quickly for me. Let me just add that one in as well. And we can show the last picture if it's come through. No, I think that's all, is it? Have I got one more? Yes, I do have one more. Here we go. So let me just show you one last picture that was sent in during the show. Uh, this one is Alexis. She's got her little pattern set out there on her um, jewelry tray there, uh, designed so that she knows exactly the size. That looks great, Alexis. Uh, beautiful design, and I love that little pendant you've got there at the bottom as well, the big feather. Is that one of our feathers? I think that's potentially exactly one just like ours. Um, yeah, that looks beautiful. I love that design. Great work there, Alexis. So thank you again for sending that one in as well. Um, one last little thing I will show you very, very quickly uh, before I go. Um, I'll just show you very quickly again on the Bead Spider website where you can go if you want to. Um, I'll just go to the home page first and I'll just show you. Here we go. Uh, so if you go to our home page right there on the left, that's where you can watch. It's directly on our home page. If you've missed this video and you want to come to it later or you want to watch it on demand about five minutes after the show ends from that little link right there where it says Dancing Cubes Herring Goat Bone Bracelet Live. Click that and it will take you to our video page where you can watch uh, this tutorial. In fact, let's see, I'm going to click on it right now. It might even show me playing live right now to all you guys. Um, right, yeah, yeah, you just click this little button that says, whoops, let me show you, just watch live or whatever. And it will be on there um, about five minutes after the show. One other thing as well, which I'll show you, if you have a look on the menu, our little video tutorial section, we'll, you'll see all the videos we've done in the past and our video tutorial related products shows you what's coming up and what things you might want or need for these uh, shows that we do. So like I said, on the first, we've got the honeycomb. The fourth, we've got that netted one. But let's just take a quick look at what I did today. The things that I did today, they are going to be on sale until next Saturday. So we give you a week to catch up. Uh, but yeah, you'll get the pattern there is 20% off. If you want to make the pattern, you don't want to pay postage. You just want the pattern. There it is right there. Otherwise, we have all the different kits. It looks like one of them is potentially sold very, very well. I need to put more stock back in of that one that I did today because we have lots of stock that we can make those up. I'll just put that back in stock in a minute. But um, there, any three kits for £30 right there, that's available. Um, and you will get double discount on the thing. Plus, Spidalon beading thread. If you want to try that out, it's only a pound 25 and it includes a needle. Um, so you'll get that. Plus, I've got lots of Preciosa colors just here. This is only a selection of what we have, though. We just restocked the other day, maybe um, about 50 colors. And I've got a whole load more colors coming very soon about Preciosa size 10s because I think they are fantastic. Uh, the, down here at the bottom, I've got all of our crystal cubes. So there's the golden pink that I used today. But don't worry, if you missed out on that um, kit that I made today, I am going to put it back in stock in just five minutes time. So you won't have to worry about that. Um, but yeah, don't forget, those are where you will find our upcoming shows um, as well from that sort of page and you can get everything at a discounted rate. So uh, let me just take a quick look at the comments that we've been receiving. Um, Dragon's Gem, she forgot to catch me live today. Not a problem. You can watch um, the, uh, the show directly from our website. In about five minutes time, I'll have it up there uh, for you to watch. So don't forget. Um, June says bye for now. See you on Wednesday. Thank you very much. Um, Thelma, she says thank you. We've got Vicky also saying, Sue, great tutorial today. Looking forward to seeing you Wednesday. I really appreciate how much you guys enjoy these videos. It really makes it worthwhile, and I very much enjoy doing them for you. I'm going to go and finish my cup of tea. I'm going to reheat it with some boiling water and have a lovely afternoon off, I think. I've earned it. Uh, but anyway, once again, 
Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed that tutorial and I look forward to seeing you all come Wednesday. Uh, it's very, very kind of you. All of those positive comments that are coming in saying goodbye. Um, the stock of that kit, I've just been told Jermaine has or Andrew has put that back in stock. So if the kit that I was doing today uh, is back in stock, you can get that again now. Uh, clearly, we must have sold a lot while I was uh, demonstrating just now, but it's back. It is back for you to watch, uh, to, to order now if you want one. Um, just a quick little heads up about postage. If you're in the UK, you can get free postage by signing up and becoming a member. So definitely, if you don't know about that, that's a tip. Um, you get free postage in the UK as long as you become a member to our website, which is free. Um, so yeah, it's a win-win for everyone. I've been told to water the plants. Good thing is I don't need to worry about that because it's raining. Um, also, uh, if you are in the US, we or Canada, we have a flat rate on our postage because we always get asked these questions. It's six pounds fifty. Um, so no matter how big your order is, you'll only pay six pounds fifty for your postage all the way to the US um, or to Canada. So that definitely makes it worthwhile, especially if you're going to go for our three kits um, double discount. So three for thirty, uh, you will get that there as well. Um, and then finally. Um, if you are outside of North America, so the US, Canada, the UK, Europe, again, it's a flat rate um, there too as well. So I think that's six pounds. And then, um, yes, that's what I was going to say. If you're outside of Europe, North America and the UK, we do an invoice postage system, which works out very, very cost effective for you guys at home because um, essentially what we do we take your order, we fill it, we pack it, we have everything ready. And then what we do, we weigh it, find out the exact price that it's going to be. And then that's all you get charged. So let me just, it seems like uh, we've lost a bit of our brightness. Let's just turn me up a bit so that we can see me a bit better. Oops, I overdid it there. Uh, yes. So yeah, we'll invoice you a postage um, invoice there. So you're only paying for what you order postage wise. Um, so it works out. We had a lady from Israel just the other day. Her postage was very, very inexpensive for her order uh, because she ordered lots and lots of very light things. So even with um, her order being quite large because she ordered lots and lots of our Aurora Micro Crystal seed beads, uh, size 11 seed beads, um, she got very, very cheap postage with our um, invoicing system. So Again, uh, if you are wanting to order overseas, we've got the whole world covered. Uh, so you need not worry, you can get it. But lastly, if you just want the pattern, you don't need to worry about postage. That will just download, you can download it straight away, complete the order and then bang into your um, inbox, it will appear right there. So um, as I was saying, thank you all very, very much for watching. I always appreciate you joining me here. Uh, on the bead table uh, as I make my jewelry. Um, don't forget to be tuning in on Wednesday. I'm really looking forward to seeing you all then and doing a bit of macrame because macrame is good fun. If you haven't done too much before, definitely check it out on Wednesday. And then I will see you on um, Saturday as well. So thank you very, very much for joining. Um, anyone whose photo they sent in and hasn't been shown yet, I will get them shown on Wednesday morning. So fear not it will get shown. Um, yeah, but yeah, thank you very, very much for watching. I'll see you then. Bye-bye.